Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Launch Network. This is Carmine Denisco, your co-host for great show, starting up again, right in the new year, Tuttle Innovation. Let me bring on my co-host, Mr. Warren Tuttle. Warren, what's going on, my friend? Hey, Carmine, it's great to see you. A little bit of a break since uh, December. Good to get back in the swing. Yeah, yeah. I know. We were, we've been uh, planning some great shows for this year. Hey, do we have a little echo here? Yeah, yeah. I, um... Uh, now, hang on one second. Let's see how that works. How does that work? How does that sound? Oh, that's better. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. I think it might be on our guest uh, side, so we'll, 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 we'll work that out as we, as we go in. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, no, really, really excited to see you again. We have an awesome show, but we'll get to that in one second. We're going to kick off the year with, with real excitement, but uh, it's been, been, uh, been a, a slower time. Um, I just got back from the PGA golf show. We had 30 booths down there with the United Menards Association Pavilion. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, both Toy Fair and Houseware Show coming up. Yeah, I mean, this is a super busy time for you, man. I, I saw you at the PGA Show. You were all over the place. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be like our guest uh, for the next month. I'm on the road <laughs> 18 out of 30 days. So uh, we'll, we'll, be, uh, we'll be getting around quite a bit. But uh, it's, all, it's all a lot of fun. Travel. Oh, fun. yeah. This is a great time of year. I can't wait till these shows start up. These events are great. They're awesome and awesome. But listen, we have a... Awesome show. I want to get to our guest right away because this is really special. We really appreciate it. We have Mike Lindell on today, and we're really appreciative that he's taking the time out of his ridiculously busy schedule to be with us. But Mike is an entrepreneur, a super entrepreneur, a classic fame, uh, an inventor, uh, the inventor of the of my pillow. Um, he's uh, just uh, done a tremendous job getting that business off the ground. We're going to talk to him about that today and about his new efforts to help inventors and his new book. Uh, so welcome, Mike Lindell from Minnesota. Mike, how are you? Doing great. Thanks for having me on. Hey, Mike, you look great, man. Look great. <laughs> I'm getting ready to go to I go to the event uh, for the governors, and the president's going to be there, so I'm all dressed up. Wow. <laughs> we know you're good buddies with the press, so uh, you, you're looking good. I was saying that I, I saw you uh, recently in one of his rallies that right there, right next to him, so you're the man. Yeah, it's pretty surreal. He, uh, on Saturday, we were... We were together, and he was uh, telling me I can be – because I need you to help me with her run my Minnesota campaign. And I said, absolutely. And and uh, we talked for quite a while. It's a uh, great guy. Just He's uh, absolutely awesome. Well, the great thing is you were right behind him. You weren't ripping up anything. It was awesome. Right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> but, uh, hey, Mike, thanks so much for, for taking a few minutes out. And uh, I want to I proudly announce, too, that, that Mike has come on the board of the United Inventors Association, the largest 501c3 nonprofit to help inventors. And as we go through the show today, you'll, you'll understand that Mike's trying to help a lot of different people. So we really appreciate that. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the time today. But, hey, I thought we would just start the way we usually do, real casually. You know, I know you're a real entrepreneur. You have a background. I think you were at a bar once and so forth. Maybe you just start there and tell how you, how you got sort of where you are today. Well, I've always been an entrepreneur, and it's my, I, was, uh, I had two jobs when I was a kid. I was, uh, worked at a grocery store, and I worked at a drive-in movie theater. And uh, <clears throat> once, I, uh, once I left there, I actually got fired at the grocery store. Uh, for, uh, and, I, and the guy says, you're destined for bigger things. I was devastated at the time. But, but I, uh, I, he was right. I was more of an entrepreneur. I, had a, um, um, I worked on a farm with my uncle, and I said, you know, he seems to be making all the money. I'm just going to go buy, get buy my own pigs. And I, so I was raising pigs in a residential area and they all got loose. And then, and, uh, and then my sister popped a, a water bed on the third floor of a apartment complex and I became a carpet cleaner. You know, it was a lot of problem solution. I was in, uh, I was in a, uh, um, in a place for a while, but, uh, um, and talked to this guy and he's, I was talking to him. I said, what do you do? He says, I run a lunch wagon business in California. And I said, you know what? I should do that here in Minnesota. And I opened up a lunch wagon business for, you know, had it for five years. And hey, I just, re by the way, I just had to say, I remember those water beds. I'm, I'm at that age. So re remember when those were big water beds? <laughs> yeah, I never, I never had one, but she did. It was a nightmare when she popped it. They uh, uh, flooded the two stories and I went and got a carpet cleaning thing, but it, it manifested into a, I had a great carpet cleaning business for about three, four years. They were never any good either if you had a few too many drinks and you were floating around on the waterbed. So, okay. <laughs> that's uh, right. That's right. So then you went in the cleaning business and, you know, your next entrepreneur. Yeah. And then, you know, then I had, uh, I had the lunch wagon business and then, I, I, you know, working for a guy, um, I ended up getting a, it was a nightclub, a bar restaurant. And 
and I never, I never had any money to really do these things. I just kind of creatively financed them and contract for deed and, and what have you. And they, uh, um, but everything I did, I put a lot of, and put everything I had into it. And, and I really learned, uh, learned from the, um, you know, the previous owner, or I learned from people in like business, in the like businesses and, and did my due diligence and, and, uh, and it was, uh, so I, I haven't worked for anyone since uh, that grocery store. Wow. So you sort of had it in your blood, right? I mean, is what you're saying. Right. You know, right. it sounds a lot like me. I was the same thing. I had a snow shoveling business, snow plow business, all that type of stuff. I think you're born, I, I think most of the people that are watching it are entrepreneurs. So they're, uh, they love the story. So right. take us through, through how you, um, you know, move towards uh, my pillow, actually. Well, the, uh, I sold, uh, I ended up selling the bars in uh, the bars I had, the last bar I had 13 years and I sold that in 2003 and I was devastated at the time. I, I had a lot of it, um, you know, I'm just, I, I had to sell, sell it at Noah. Um, it, it was some technicalities in my book, it kind of explains it, but I'm going, you know, it seemed like the world was crashing down. Now I look, if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't be where I'm at. So I think, you know, as I look back, certain things happen. I'm going at the time, they seemed so terrible that you failed or that, or that things that went terribly wrong. And, and then, uh, you know, you learn from that and move on. Well, I had, uh, I was, uh, I was a professional card counter too. So that kind of bridged me from the, from the, um, uh, the bar to the inventing my pillow, but I had the dream of my pillow one night. It was, uh, they don't have, they didn't have mice back then. And I got, I go, you know, my pillow, that sounds like a good name for a pillow. And it was like dreams I was getting from God. And I wrote my pillow all over the house. And my daughter came upstairs. One of my daughters, she's like 11 years old. She goes, what are you doing? And I said, I'm going to vent this pillow. So we call my pillow. It's going to change the world. And she grabs her glass of water. She says, that's really random, dad. And, went back home. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, and then I kept getting these how old, dreams. Wait, how old was she then? She's about 11 years old. That's awesome. Uh, and she, uh, but I kept getting these dreams and, and then I would in and uh, you know, different things I wanted in and I wouldn't give up. Um, you know, my, my one son and I, we would sit and try all these different things inside my pillow. And this went on for weeks and then months and the kids are saying to their mother, what, you know, when's he going to get over this pillow thing? And she, Oh, he'll get over it soon. You know, you know, but it never did. And uh, a month became two months, became four months, became six months, became eight months. And, I just put everything I had into it, and they, uh, and then I got done. It was a, it was such a problem solution. I think with any in invention, you look at it, you say, "Here's the problem. What's the solution? And then what's that going to manifest to?" Mm. And and I would take each part of it. I wanted it to have everything, not just solve one problem. You know, I wanted it to be adjustable. I wanted. I got to the point where to wash and dry it, they, you couldn't wash and dry pillows back then. I said. Well, I wanted to do that. So that took another month and mortgage my house. When, you know, I had nothing left when, by the time I got it invented. Well, and, and this is a story really for our inventor community. And uh, you really went all the way in. I'll put all your chips in. Huh? Right. And then, and then uh, I was turned down everywhere. That was the part that was bad. I, got, I had it done and I had nothing left in the world but these, th you know, maybe two or 300 take, pillows. Where'd you take, I mean, you took it to retailers or to customers? Yeah, I walked in a bed bath. One of them was, I walked in a bed bathroom and I said, how many you want? I, I go, I got the best pillow ever made. And they go, where's your manager? And he goes, um, you need to leave now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I approached retail. You couldn't get in retail. It's a complete shutout. I learned a lot back. Has, that hasn't changed either, by the way. You're not walking in any retail door. Save your time if you're an entrepreneur. It's not happening. Um, you walk in there, there's, it's going to be shut out, and especially the climate we're in now. Well, then I, someone said, well, Mike, uh, why don't you do a kiosk? I said, how do you spell that? I didn't know what a kiosk was. And uh, so I did this kiosk, and, and one of the things for me, one of the things I was up against is um, um, I couldn't talk to people. I, you know, I was an addict. I, I had been a, a cocaine addict and a crack addict and, and uh, gambling. I mean, I had all these addictions. But one of the things I couldn't do when I was straight was talk to people. So the kiosk was very awkward. I only worked it one day. Wow. Wow. And I want to tell entrepreneurs out there, okay, my strength was not talking. My God given strength. At least I thought it was, not right? And yet, and yet it is, really. <laughs> you know, it is. <laughs> but I, um, I did the kiosk. My, my wife, my ex or wife at the time, she worked it day and night. And we, we didn't sell too many pillows. But the day I worked it, 
this guy came up and he's, he uh, said, uh, can I get your uh, phone number? And I gave him, I wrote our business card and I, I didn't have any business cards. I said, oh, I'm all out. And I wrote it on a piece of paper and gave, gave him this number. And, uh, and I couldn't work at the rent, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't stand talking to people. I was so uncomfortable. You can't get rejected if you don't talk, you know, if you don't talk. Right. And, uh, but anyway, that January, now I had to borrow money from, uh, from uh, an ex guy or ex friend that he uh, uh, actually was an ex bookie to buy for Christmas presents that year. And uh, I'd buy for Christmas presents. And then that a guy called in January and he says, uh, he says, Mike, uh, I, I got a pillow from you at that kiosk. And that was the one guy I gave that number to. And he goes, this changed my life. He said, would you, would you like to be in the Minneapolis Home and Garden Show? I run that. And I said, sure. Well, then I set my booth up different. So I have a table between me and the public. And, wow. and then I could actually talk. I was like, you know, I could talk. I could, they, they're coming up to me. So it, was a, it wasn't like small talk then. It was, I'm telling you about the yeah. pillow. Well, then the next day, uh, everyone kept coming back from the day, but from the first day going, wow, this changed my life. This, this, uh, this is amazing and all this. And it made me feel so good inside. I mean, that I had accomplished something wow. Wow. that, you know, that fine, you know, it wasn't about the money. It, wow. Then that just accelerated my passion. And I did home shows and fairs for six years before that infomercial. And, wow. and so, to quick, so directly to customers, right? I mean, just right there. You, you had yeah. To and, and then, um, but I got out behind that booth. I still couldn't talk to people, but they, it's, uh, you know, to, to set the, to set the, finish that part of the story, by the grace of God, I did quit all my addictions January 16, 2009. And two years later, my company was taken, you know, I went through all this betrayal and stuff that wasn't my fault. So I want to tell any inventors out there, you know, I didn't give up. My pillow was just a little pulse and nobody would take us. And they, and I said, you know what, let's bring it right to the, right to the public and do an infomercial. Mm. Everybody told me it couldn't be done. Infomercials are just to go into the box stores. They're gonna fail. All these naysayers, I said, I want a real audience. I want just a friend of mine. And we, they said, no, it couldn't be done. But I got one guy that said, well, we'll try it. And then he brought in a real producer the night before. And we were doing our reads and he texts the other guy and said, this is the worst guy I've ever seen on TV. He will <laughs> never make it. I go, why did, why did you invite me here? Why did you invite me here? He goes, oh he's paying us. What do you care? And uh, the next day we went to do the commercial and, and I couldn't talk with this, with this teleprompter and this audience. So we brought in a table like at the shows and I was in my comfort zone and we just knocked it out of the park. I was wow. living in my sister's basement and it launched October 7, 2011. I was living in my sister's basement with not, nothing left other than that infomercial was ready to launch. I had about five or 10 employees and 40 days later, I had 500 employees. You know, that's, that is unbelievable. But before you go on, cause it's just such an amazing story. Wow. I always felt like the home fairs and home shows you know, that people go to, you know, and they buy stuff right there. Sort of, it was sort of like the predecessor for that were those guys on the boardwalk in the 30s, you know, selling stuff. Right. And they were the covered wagon guys in the 1800s. Right. They were right. the most similar to, to doing TV, right? I mean, there's like a natural progression there for you, right? Right. The, I, I'll tell any inventor out there, you know, there's nothing better than, the, they call it the trenches, the home shows, the state fairs. And, and you, you, you learn, there's a couple of things you learn there. You learn, you get feedback on your product from, from, from people, you know, you're going to get feedback. You're going to get feedback. You can change your advertising. You can do all kinds of stuff. Like I did putting that table there and I changed, you know, what's going to draw people, right. but you really got to watch your shows then and don't just get complacent. Learn from your deviations during those shows, change something, see if someone's mm -hmm. coming to the booth and, you know, and respond. My pillow, I was fortunate. I've never changed the formula since day one because it, it worked right out of the gate. But if you had an invention, even packaging or whatever, and you're going, you know, you've got to micromanage every little piece of it. And if you're a passionate entrepreneur with an invention, you want, you want every part of it to, to, you know, to, to make it work. But that was your, so that's your pitch. I mean, obviously you, you gave your pitch a hundred thousand times, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. you always find your pitch. And to me, it's like that Malcolm Gladwell thing, outliers, you know, like the Beatles played 10,000 hours and, right. and Bill Gates did 10,000 hours of program. You, you had to have done 10,000 hours of getting that pitch right. Oh, I, you know, I, every day for seven years, I mean, I would go, 
of like the Minnesota State Fair, I'd go up and down these things carrying uh, 30 pillows over my shoulder and, and uh, you know, every and making them at night, selling them on the weekends. It was just, uh, it was a lot of work, but it was fun. It was fun because uh, I was learning so much and it was like, you, I was accomplishing something, you know, and, and it, uh, and, he, and you learn, like I say, in the, in the, because of the home shows and fairs, just because it works at one fair, a show might not work at the other. Yeah. It depends on, you got to learn what your audience is. Who's buying your product? You learn that, and then you go, you, you, you uh, go to where, the, you, there's an old saying, I go, I go goose hunting, and if there's no geese, I go, I go where the geese are. You know, if you don't have any geese, go where the geese are. I mean, you, you need to not only do your due diligence to the show, but who's going to come to that show? You know, if, uh, you know, with my pillows back then, they're going, uh, uh, boy, it's a women's expo. Well, women buy pillows. You know, I, I'd go there and that would, some of them were my worst shows. Mm -hmm. I found out that it was, uh, you know, my demographics were, uh, were 40 years and older baby boomers. That's who was bought, that's who bought my pillows at first, you know. And, and you, uh, learned, you learned in the trenches. And by the way, were you, you were taking cash, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You have cash and credit cards. That's, that's pretty. That's pretty exciting. I've been there before myself. To try right. To get that first twenty or fifty dollar bill or whatever it is. Right. I mean. It's, right. Yeah. It's, it's Absolutely. About that, right? It's like yeah. people, in, people in glass towers, you know, who run don't get that. Right. I mean, they, right. they have an integral thing between you and the customer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You and you don't. You you, you, you just it's such an education. It's like it's like being on the job there. And, you know, being an apprentice, you know, where you're just learning and learning, you can learn your advertising, your product, your customer. There's so much to learn there. Um, it is, um, um, it can be, you know, here's the, here's the warning part of it. It's uh, if um, it, that's where also where people look that are corrupt and look for products and they try and copy you and stuff. So there, there is that, but um you know, we can talk about that a little later. That's a lot of reasons why. The shift you made the shift to TV, where you took basically what you're doing at the home fairs, and literally, and you came across so well. I mean, you were so well received by America, right? I mean, almost like you're. Right. You know, and I want to tell anyone that's an anomaly too with the uh, with the TV. I don't TV and and radio and even print. Um, print's a little different. I'll tell you about that in a second. But those three things, I I've never branded. And I want to tell you about that. I have never branded. People say, oh, what do you mean? You spend all this on advertising. No, I view every single ad, every single spot you see my pill. I've been on TV 2.6 million times now, okay? Every time that aired, I either broke even or made money, or I never ran the ad again. If you're, I'm never going to do something to lose money on it, or if I do, it would be very minimal, and I would, it, you'd have to fix, either get the, get the advertising for cheaper or – make the ad better or do, mm -hmm. or do, you know, if you don't get it, I bench it. I'm not going to sit and just spend money and go, well, gee, this is going to manifest out to me, to these sales. I don't have time to brand. A lot of entrepreneurs don't have money to brand. Right, right, right. But, but you, you were, became the brand and interestingly enough, you know, you came across so well and so associated with it. And I know you also have a story about how a competitor tried to rip you off and not only did he try to rip you off, he put a guy that looked just like you, right? <laughs> the same shirt on. Right, right, right. In uh, I was uh, after I did that infomercial, I took in hundred, about a hundred million dollars in six months, and I was, I woke up and I was almost six million in the hole, and because I didn't, I didn't take charge of my advertising. I didn't take charge. This example of buying buying stuff where mm -hmm. nobody tracked it, and uh, companies took advantage of me. I didn't get the. I said, "This is the best price you got." I had handshake deals and some with lawyers. And I, I just too, put too much trust out there without doing that due diligence because we grew. I just want to make pillows. Let's make pillows. Let's make yeah. pillows. So here I am in my sister's basement. Here, here I am in my sister's basement, and I'm about just shy of $6 million in debt, and I've never used a bank. So I go, wow, i got to work the rest of my life for nothing. And all of a sudden, this ad comes on TV, and there's a guy in a blue shirt, uh, mustache, um, selling the exact same pillow. It was copying it, and uh, and that's uh, it's horrific. That's what uh, there's three companies that do that, and they still do it to this day. Well, wow. you know, we know that story that, that story well, but it's really truly amazing, you know. And I, I you, by the way, Carmen, uh, this, this really reminds me of Tom Rich too. 
I did a product years ago called Listo that we went on to sell tens of millions and, and uh, the same story and very similar similar approach to it. But, but here's what's cool, Mike. You, you are really such a beacon to inventors and, and, and it is a story that not everybody can do what you can do. I mean, you know, it just doesn't happen overnight like this, but your perseverance kept you going. Right. But tell us about how you got on radio, right? Because then that didn't that just no. yeah, radio. Let me tell you. you know, okay, so I'm going to tell any entrepreneur out there, TV. I'm telling you, you're, it's because the filter in advertising. You need if you pay ten thousand dollars for an ad. I'm going to do an example. Let's say it's a dog bed. Here's your filter. I don't know if you people can see my hands. Okay, you pay this. Now, here's people that have dogs, cut it in half. Here's people that care about their dogs, cut it in half again. Here's people that pay this money. You just, uh, I just charge you to fish in a fish tank and only 10% are gonna bite on the bait mm -hmm. and you paid for the other 90%. Mm -hmm. That's advertising. So you will never get that filter on TV. Forget about it, I'm serious. Now, radio is a different story and so is print. If you're doing newspaper ads out there, there is nothing better for an entrepreneur they're called remnant ads, yeah. and you can get them very inexpensive. Never run an ad in a paper. If you ever pay full price, then you can never get a remnant ad. So if you do a remnant ad, you can do them very cheap. They can drop any time, and um, you can change it up. It's very inexpensive, and you can see if you pay $50 for the ad and take back 200 that's a great, great return. Uh, radio is a different. With radio, you go, you get your, you can... People are more apt, they love stories of entrepreneurs. So if you localize it, if let's say, I don't care where you're at, you're in uh, Fairmont, Minnesota, this you know, town of 12,000, go to your local radio show, people like human interest story. They like a new product. You go, you pay that, the ads are very inexpensive and you make them and then you see how much did it cost and how much did I get back? It's a very simple, easy well, teeter-totter. And take your product costs off. If you spend $200 for a radio ad, and uh, especially if you can get the host believing in your product, that's ah. awesome. You know, that's absolutely, there's no better thing, but you pay $200 for that ad. And if you, if you take back, uh, uh, let's say $400 and your product cost is 20%, um, you've got 400, um, you took in $400. So 20%, that's 80. And then you have product costs. It's about your, your break even. You probably made about $50 on that $200 ad net profit take home, you know? You, so it's uh it's that's what you're looking at and then if you just duplicate what works in that ad if you take and do an ad in you know um if you're doing a radio and, and you know and here's the thing too is don't let anybody talk you into oh you gotta you've got a brand 10 times or you know you gotta buy 10 ads because people will start catching on and it gets bigger e i don't believe in that either um i believe i believe that it, you know, right out of the gate, if people like it and they hear it and it's intriguing, they're going to buy and you don't have time to sit and waste all your money. I'm going, well, gee, I only sold one there. Well, if you only sold one, you better change the ad or you better change the product or you better go to another place and go back to the trenches, those home shows and fairs and learn a little bit more before you dip into that because, because you can spend a lot of money on branding, especially when you get into suck -a buck from Facebook and you get into Google and all these things, and you're buying you're buying ads from Silicon Valley. You better be very careful. Yeah. Well, well Mike, it's 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 an amazing it's an amazing path, and and you've done it so well. And and and, and I, I think about having had nine of my own businesses too. The complexity with once you get six million dollars in debt, and how much money it takes to keep it going, right? I mean, to get to the other side. I mean, and you got yeah, that, that, right? Right. Well, that was you know that was a huge mistake I had made, letting other people just spend my money and I, and I making deals where I didn't know. So, but you got to realize I didn't, I didn't have anybody really to learn from, um, yeah. to learn from. So I kind of went into blind and I didn't have anything to guide me. I had always been in service business, like bar business and restaurants and, and yeah, things where I'm servicing, right. not a product, not a product. Mm. So, well, but I did learn from 2012, the mistakes I made, it took me two years. It did get noticed by the box stores then. And, I, and the shopping channels. So, but it took two years for me to get out of debt, almost three years to bring back that six, you know, day after day working for, for a mistake I made. But, all, but more importantly, I looked at it like a learning curve. Right. All the stuff I learned from 2012, now I took it all in house, my email marketing, everything I did myself and the mistakes that were made, those deviations and those things that were made there, 
Now I set the baseline and I look for deviations every day, good deviations. If I mm. see a good ad, how did it happen? <clears throat> and I duplicate it. Right. You right. Know? Well, that's awesome. And you know, you, you bring to mind, uh, I once heard a guy say, uh, a wise man say, what can two people always agree on? It's how to spend a third person's money. So Yeah, that's what it was. That's what it was, too. <laughs> but, uh, hey, you better have somebody real trustworthy that uh, that's going to be spending money, unless you're going to micromanage each thing like I do. Well, I always say put grandma on the cash register. That's right. <laughs> that's <it. laughs> but uh, hey, listen, listen, since we, we could go on all day here, it's a great story. And But let's let's switch gears just a little bit. Because I want to get into your book, but I also want to get into my store. Maybe we could segue just what you're trying to do. You're trying to help inventor with money. Right. Well, you know, the stuff that I've been through <clears throat> from Amazon to fighting Amazon to fighting Google to fighting Facebook to fighting Twitter, anywhere you put advertising, anywhere you can put a product, um, you know, all the dot coms out there now from Walmart.com, all these dot coms, you can actually get products up there. But you know what? You're going to get lost. You're going to get copied. Uh, one of the things in our country, the biggest thing is copying. They bring, all of a sudden you look and your products in the as seen on TV section in Walmart and it's been copied over in China. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and this is a, it's a terrible thing that's went on in our country. Uh, people don't have lawyers to fight for patent infringements and all that stuff. So what I'm doing, I've got, it's called mystore.com. God bless me. I was able to get that name and, um, and to get this platform and what it is you can put you apply you can put your inventions there we take uh, i have another part of the company that takes uh you online i mean you can get to get vetted you know i want to make basically vetting the entrepreneur yep. um, as much as i am anything because i want to have a safe platform and they come the products are going to go up there i'm going to have my driver products on tv which point all the people mm -hmm. in the country like they do to my pillow now pointing to this mystore.com so I'm going to bring the eyes. Everything is about getting the eyes. Uh, it's a safe platform because if uh, if any of my products, any of my people up there get copied in the box stores, it's a very simple solution. I just go to the box store and say, if you're going to keep not competition, but a patent copy or a trademark copy and say, you know what, for that reason, you never get to sell my pillow or any of our products. The box stores and everything have been very respectful of that because they want the new names that I bring them for my advertising. Well, that's awesome. And we really appreciate that from the inventor community and it's my store and we'll help get the word out more on that as you, as you get that rolling. So, so let's shift gears real quick to your best selling book, right? Right. How many have you sold so far? I see you everywhere with it. I mean, how well, I haven't, we haven't really even launched it yet. I mean, we launched <laughs> it about two weeks ago and we put it out there. Um, I'm not going to put that in the box George, yet. I'm waiting to do a TV commercial, but it's called, it's called, uh, I've sold, I don't know, thousands upon thousands now just on kind of word of mouth and being on TV. Like you said, you've seen it on all the talk shows. <laughs> and and um, it's called, What are the Odds from Crack Addict to CEO? One of the things, you know, like I said, I had these addictions. And anybody that gets it, you can learn so much about entrepreneurship. You can learn about addiction. You learn about, there's so many things to that it's not just for people, you know, when you talk about addiction, addiction is not just someone in the streets. It's, it's affects everyone. No, no matter how many forks you eat with. I mean, I know, you know, in all walks of life now, but the adversity faced that I faced uh, being in all these different entrepreneur ventures, uh, whether it was service or business, you're going to learn so much. It's, it's like a fiction story. It's amazing. This amazing fiction book and then you go wait a minute this is all true you know <laughs> and they uh you know it, it, it's, it's, it's pretty cool because by the way i, I don't know if i told you, i haven't had a drink or, or or done drugs or smoked cigarettes in 43 years so i i reached my point at 23 years old where i had to wow. i wanted to live you know what i mean so right on the time but having said that uh it's an amazing story and the, and the fact Mike, that you're so open about it is so refreshing. I tend to be open too. I don't I have a problem. Right. <laughs> right. Amazing thing. I want to thank you for it. Yeah. And I've got another program coming out called Lindo Recovery Network, and that's going to launch in about two months. I'm actually working with, uh, uh, was that with the president where he signed the opiate bill, and this is going to absolutely change the country. This wow. one, along with that, along, you know, you have my My Store thing, but you also, I'm very passionate too about this recovery network is going to help millions, not, not thousands, millions of people. And it's going to employ tens of thousands of ex addicts that, that are got their hearts restored. And, uh, 
it's it's just going to be. I mean, I'm really excited. I got about 15 things going on, but they're all coming to fruition right now. It's so refreshing because a lot of people they might have a small success and they like fold up the tent, you know, and they go I'm right, gonna right. Fire now, you know, and right. I, I don't know. I, I you know, this is fun, right? I mean, you know, this is what oh, absolutely. They want you know, they want me to run for governor of Minnesota and all this stuff too, and I'm going. You know what? If it helps the country, if it helps bring God back to our country, that anything I can do to help people—that's my passion, and that's what makes me feel good. And they, uh, yeah, when's the and, next uh, election there? When, when, when is that? Twenty twenty-two. But the the president wants me to uh, help uh, be the campaign direct Minnesota for this upcoming election. And for me, it's so easy um, when I when I do my due diligence and get behind something and I believe in something, I'm all in. Any inventor out there? I, you know, I'm going to tell you right now, because of our great president and this administration, right now, the consumer confidence being the highest it's ever been that in my lifetime or any, anybody that I remember. Well, entrepreneurs are taking chances now on businesses and inventions, and they have a safety net to fall back on. If you know what? So if you fail and you took a chance finally that you, you, you procrastinated, procrastinate out of fear, out of fear. Now you can take that chance because guess what? You can fall back on pick your job. Right now it's like an, it's an employee's market. You can get a job anywhere, wages going up, and it's very exciting times we're in. And that's what's going to happen now. And that's where the My Store platform is so good because you're not going to – we're in a climate now where, where our president's very, very on board with not having these copycats too and protecting our inventors. There's a lot of stuff that he's doing now that you're going to see – that to protect our inventors. So it's going to be, we're in the great times. We're in the best of times. Hey, listen, we thank you for that because, uh, you know, the inventor's been all under assault from all sides, not just the ripoff artists, but Google, patent reform, all these things. So, and by the way, I, I also have a book coming out um, called uh, Inventor Confidential. So we'll, we'll tie into some of your themes there. You know, we want to get that word out with you of what, Who's really Absolutely. out trying to screw the inventor at the end of the day? Right, right. And you can put it right. We're going to put all books on mystore.com, too. So we're going to have, you know, there, there's a good place for that, too. Absolutely. Well, we want to be part of that. So, all right. So everybody vote for Mike for governor. And we want to, we, want to, <laughs> we also, we also know that you probably know every little radio station in Minnesota, right? So they, they but, have your back. What's that? Every, every radio station in Minnesota must have your back. You know, you Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, I'm on 500 radio stations across the country. <laughs> and they, um, um, yeah, but Minnesota, yeah, they all are. I mean, they, it's for me, it's, you know, what I, if I ran for, for governor, it's, it would be to, to unite because I have so many, there's so many people. I like talking to people that are on the left. I didn't know anything about politics at, at all. And, you know, coming out of addiction, I'm going, what's a conservative? What's a liberal? But now I know how politics affect our daily lives, from entrepreneurship to our jobs to everything, more than anything. So if I got into the politics, I, I would go, okay, I'm going to, you know, to unite the, you know, say, hey, you guys, come on in. It's great here. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding? Look around you. I, I will. And I, I like talking. For me, I like talking to the left and talking to them and say, you guys, you know, look at over here what this has done. We've been spending our whole lives going with promises and now it's not just the promises, but what it manifested to. We never got to find out what they would manifest to if promises were kept. That's so key. Now that the promises are kept, wow, why didn't someone keep their promise? Because what we imagine could happen is happening, except for my home state. I'll tell you one thing. I want to put this plug in there. Uh, the, like the, you know, I come from uh, Minneapolis. I, I spent a lot of time in the streets of Minneapolis. The, the lowest black unemployment in the country right now that's going on all over our country, historical low unemployment. Well, the, our unemployment and the highest unemployment in the country for blacks are Minneapolis, Minnesota. What's wrong with that picture? Well, you know, Mazel tov. And I, and I, and I, you know, the, the, uh, I always think of Minnesota as a very innovative place. I mean, you have the companies like 3M and right, right. what they've done and what you're doing and, uh, several of our board members and people are based in Minnesota for the, right. so that's why we're going to have our, our annual conference out there too in Minneapolis. So it'll be right down the street. And now get governor and straighten out the little things. <laughs> <laughs> <There you go. laughs> 
Well, hopefully you'll talk to us someday when you're a big shot. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, listen, hey, Car Carmine, this is this is awesome. Uh, I'm sure a couple of questions have come in on Facebook Live. You wanna wanna jump in here and? Uh, Mike? Yeah, yeah. I was just sitting there listening. I'm amazed at the stories, and I'm more amazed, Mike, about how many things you have going at the same time. Yeah, I know. That's just for me. It's going. You know, I'm about as I leave here. I'm going to be going meeting with some governors and the president, and and uh, it's just I'm. I love what I'm doing. People say, Mike, how do you keep up, and how do you ever rest? <laughs> you know what? I love what I'm doing. It's not like it's work. And they, right. anybody out there that's an entrepreneur, I want you to know, don't do something you're not passionate about. You're, you're right out of the gate. You're gonna, you're gonna be miserable. It's not worth it. There isn't any money in the world that's worth uh, doing something you're not gonna be passionate about. And that's uh, start there. You know. So but for me, words, I love. So in uh, other words, you don't sleep. So in other words, you don't use your own. Hey, ho, ho, ho. But when I do, it's quality. <laughs> <laughs> so mike one one of the questions that came in is um they said they know you were you were making your own pillows when was the time that you said i need to go find a manufacturer like w did it hit you fast or were you prepared for it what do you mean i manufacture my own i i, I would never get in my uh, you know they said yo you need to make it overseas and stuff i would never have uh have had someone else make it for me just because that's the way i was i wanted to micromanage I wanted every pillow that came out of there to be one I'd use myself. And, uh, and I wanted to be hands-on. It's so rewarding making every part of it, that, at least for me. And, uh, and then Kevin said, oh, you need to make it overseas. Well, let me tell you, there's a couple things about overseas. One thing, you tie up your money. Uh, what if your, client, your footprint changes and here they are coming across the, um, the ocean and now you don't either, you don't have enough, you end up air shipping and it costs money. There's so many downfalls to making it over there and so many great things if you're making it here. And one of the things with an entrepreneur too, when you buy with product, if you're having someone else manufacture it here in the US, you, you really need to go after them. And I think it's changing. Here, here's what it used to be. They're going, well, what, would, what, if, I, what if I had, uh, what if I'm gonna sell 100,000 units? Oh, then you could get it for this price. Mm. But you got to prove yourself first. Don't don't buy into that. Tell them, you know what? Say, I want that price now because the success is based on that. And then the manufacturer's taking a little chance with you. They need to take some chances too. The manufacturers need to take some chances. If they believe in the product, then they should give it to you right out of the gate and, and you're in it together then. You know, and and otherwise what happens is this like I left up. Uh, I left uh, about 10 million on the pay table that, that spring of 2012. And a lot of it was because I said, is this the best price you got? Uh, for example, my patented foam was 78 cents a board foot. I paid 31 cents a board foot now for the same exact wow. identical thing because I proved myself and I shouldn't have had to prove myself. So I can go in now and say, um, I'm going to do this, and they, they believe me, but <laughs> yeah. an entrepreneur, they don't believe, and that's, the entrepreneur should try and hold their ground and really shop around that manufacturing. Yeah, it's, it's America. Everybody wants the most money, right? Wow. So, right, right, but, exactly. But every, every pillow in Minnesota, right? Right. 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 <laughs> hey, real, real quick, I know we're, we're low on time. One of the questions was, uh, as soon as you started talking about the My Store, Mike, uh, we got a bunch of things. Um, what phase or or – how, what, what does the product have to be ready to approach and get it on the store? Like, uh, does it have to be ready for retail, ready for sale? Yeah, yeah, you're not, we're, we're actually send everything that's not ready. I don't, we don't, we don't really want uh, the prototypes and stuff. But we, you know, this is a platform. You have product and you're looking, I'm going to bring the eyes to your product. So if you, if you have product and maybe you've got some and, uh, we, we'll look at that and say, if you're a driver is really rare, one that's going to end up where it's on TV and everything. That's a different, a different uh, product where, that we, the platform we do with that. But, but the, uh, let's say you're an entrepreneur, you've got a hundred units and uh, you're coming up there. And now this, um, we will, we will talk with you, talk through it and go, you know what? We believe once this is up that you're going to need a lot more, but then we work with them in, in the, in that space and say, okay, Okay, if you get a thousand of them a week or whatever, so it's kind of like the fulfillment. You know, we work with them, but but if you just have a prototype and you just have uh, and you don't even have a manufacturer, we're gonna send we're gonna send them to you know to the inventor association. We're not we don't we 
That's not what we're here for. Yeah. I'm bringing eyes to the product. So it, it has to be product ready. We're, I'm sorry we don't have the time to go through each thing and say, hey, that's a good invention or that's not. Right. You know. So, so yeah. The great thing is that, that what Mike does is special and unique and, uh, and can do it in a way, by the way, I don't want to knock anybody, but that you don't have to necessarily go on Amazon and, and get it exposed to that degree or go through all that and those knockoffs. Then if right. you education, come to the UIA and we can, we can get you started there. That's, that's, that's exactly right. It works really good together. We work good together. Yep, absolutely. Very cool. How about one more question, Karma, and then we'll let, we'll let, uh, my, yeah, we'll yeah. let Mike go do the small things with the president. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel, yeah, I'm asking these questions like, my God, he's got a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> so, so one of the questions was, do you sell the product outside the country and how hard was that to do it? I have one person that joined in there. They're about to sell their product outside of the U.S. and they're worried about it. Um, we, uh, I have a plant in London now. I've never been there. Um, the, the, um, I had a trusted guy that went over there and, and he, he started it. Um, we, um, I have uh, Australia and New Zealand. I met these guys at home show. It was another trusted people. Um, I, it's a space that I, I don't have a, a lot of uh, expertise in. Those are basically the countries. I've sold 46 million pills, but it's all been United States and Canada. Um, I think one of the things that I can tell you for Canada is very easy for any of the entrepreneurs. It's just huh. like, um, it's very easy. You can even use your, you're, um, you don't need a CA website. You can still use a dot com. Um, it's uh, very, very easy. It's almost like plug in. And, um, and it, but overseas, you know, you're going to, just like here, you're going to, if they like it, you're going to get copied and there's mm. nothing you're going to, there's nothing you're going to do about it. I mean, that's it's, uh, it's you. Um, it, I would say don't, don't spend a lot of money on each country getting the dot coms or the, or the, or getting, trying to get patents in all these places because you know what? You don't have the money to fight them over there anyway. Right. We went into we went into Dubai uh, one time. We had a company went into Dubai. Uh, they took our pillows in there, and we lost. Uh, we got ta um, we got taken advantage of taking our money, and, and uh, there's nothing we could do about it. What are you going to do? Go over there and go to court and fight? You can't. So it's a it's a space. Be very careful. Australia's good. New Zealand's go over there and good. Take hostages. Yeah, yeah, right, right. But I mean, I mean, you got you know England, England, Australia, New Zealand. These are very safe places I've been in. And uh, uh, but the other, uh, I haven't really been in the other countries. Uh, now, as far as manufacturing, like my sheets can't be made here in the U.S. because there's no weavers and spinners. So I have trusted guys here in the U.S. where they were able to go over there. I sent them over there, and they're very. The manufacturing is a lot easier, a lot safer than trying to sell retail over there. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. so the Egyptian sheets, right? So cool. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hey, Mike, listen, this has been this has been fantastic. We really appreciate you taking a few minutes out. We know you've got a lot of things. We wish you all the best on the book. You know that's a big passion for you, but we really appreciate what you mean to the inventors. You're a shining light. So yeah, well, well, thank you. And I'm gonna put, <clears throat> I'm gonna put one more plug in for the president because he helps inventors so much. Everybody loves our president. Some just don't know it yet. <laughs> does, he, does he use a my pillow at the White House? Yeah, absolutely. He does. He uh, he um, back in 2016. He goes, you know, I should try that pillow, and and he um, uh, he uses it. He he's one of the hardest workers I've ever known in my life, and he gets very few hours sleep, but they are quality. And uh, but I just want he does have this. There is no way. The laws that are changing and stuff, the path we were going down for inventors, for um, we couldn't do this without this president, this administration. He's he's attacking the the, the bad they, you know that was hurting us and the uh, um, the copycats, the, the the stuff that was that China was just taking from us and copying and the intellectual property, all these things. He's he's got our backs as entrepreneurs and uh, he's going to continue to have our backs. And there's so many good things coming. I'm excited because. Uh, I get to hear firsthand what's coming and then to use them in the real world. Well, he's, he, he did a great job selecting the current USPTO patent office uh, executive, you know, the guy who runs the place. Director, office, yeah. Who's right. the, uh, director of the patent office. Great, great choice. And uh, I'll just say I'm also involved in the National Pro Bono Patent Program and a new Success Act, which is going to help minorities and women in the uh, innovation as well. So, but you're, right. uh, 
my is very much uh, similar uh, to what I love to do, and I really appreciate everything you're doing. So thank you. Um, well, th thanks for having me on, guys. Right. Thank you. You take care, Mike. God bless.